Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about using flashcards to learn a foreign language, and why I think it is not effective, and that it actually can be a big waste of your time, because it can cause you to pick up bad habits that you then have to unlearn. Why do I not like flashcards? It's not just that I dislike flashcards, it's that I dislike the broader method that I think that they represent, which is associating words in one language to words in another language in this one-to-one -one way. So like, when a lot of people learn foreign languages, they start learning words, and they're like, okay, here's this word, and it means this in my native language, and then this other word means this. The thing is, that's not how language works. Words don't have a one-to-one -one correspondence in meaning with words in other languages. And I could give you some examples of this. Like, think of the word bomb in English. In Spanish, you have this word bomba, which it looks kind of like the word bomb, and it sounds kind of like the word bomb, and it means bomb. So their, their use overlaps. But the word bomba also has additional meanings that don't correspond to the English word. So for example, it also means pump. And so if you have a bike pump, you might actually call that a bomba as well. I went to Puerto Rico, and I was kind of surprised to find that the word bomba there also means a fire engine, which sort of makes sense if you think about it, because a fire engine has a pump in it, and it pumps water. Um, but in English, we don't call a fire engine a bomb, and we don't call it a pump either, so the connection is a little bit indirect. If you think about the word bomb in English, too, you realize that it has all these other uses, too. Like, you might be like, oh man, that movie was a bomb, meaning that it was a failure, it did not achieve success. But you also might say, oh man, that restaurant is the bomb, meaning it's like really freaking awesome. And so already you see that, that our word bomb also has all of these different meanings too, and again, they don't correspond to the meanings in Spanish, even though it looks like the words are related you can pretty much find any two languages, including languages that are very closely related to each other, like Spanish and Portuguese, and you will find that these words don't correspond in this one-to-one -one way. They have all these different idiomatic uses. And so like, if you're learning just the, the raw meaning of a word, you're learning very little about that word. You don't really know the word. And when you're studying languages with flashcards, you're creating this sort of very artificial type of knowledge that is based more on your understanding of your own native language than on the language you're trying to learn. And so you are making these correspondences, but you're not getting a sense of how the language itself is structured, like how it fits together, the sort of internal logic of the language. This is the exact opposite of how native speakers learn to speak a language. Native speakers are immersed in the language from day one, they are surrounded by it, they hear it all the time, and they hear it in context. And so they're picking it up by like trying to figure it, figure it out themselves, and form these associations, and they see how the language fits together. So if you want to learn a language effectively, I think it is a much better use of your time to study in such a way that you get at least a glimpse of that structure from the beginning. And one thing that I think is super important for this is learning words in context. Like, if you're going to study words, don't just study the words in a one-to-one -one correspondence, find the words in actual sentences. I made a video recently about Duolingo, and one thing that I think is really great about Duolingo is that it teaches words in context. It sometimes introduces words in this one-to-one -one way, but very quickly it moves to using those words in whole sentences. And I find that it actually does a pretty good job of displaying different uses of a word. So like, you'll learn a new word, and then you'll see, oh wow, it has these different possible interpretations in different contexts. Even if you're not using a t tool like Duolingo, you can actually do a little bit of this yourself. Uh, you can go onto Google, and you can type the word that you're trying to learn into Google, and see how... and, and by typing it into Google, I want to make clear, 
use the version of Google in the language you're trying to learn. Don't type it into the English Google. Go to like google.de for Germany or like google.es for Spain if you're learning Spanish or whatever country you want to focus on. Do that and then type the word in and see how that word is used in contexts. You can even use Google's autocomplete tool to get some ideas. Like you can start typing a sentence that contains that word or a phrase that contains that word and see how Google autocompletes it. There are a lot of different ways to use the internet to get that context, even if you don't have the opportunity to interact with native speakers. Ultimately, I think immersion is the best way to learn a language. So once you get to the point that you can actually watch videos, and watch movies, and read books, and read blogs, and interact with people. Once you get to that point, then do it as soon as you can. I think that is the most effective way to learn languages. I wish I had been exposed to this idea, this sort of realization, earlier in life, because when I first started to learn languages, I was trying to learn words in this one-to-one -one correspondence way, and I fell into the pitfall that people usually do, which is that you apply the logic and structure of your own language to this language you're trying to learn. And you don't really learn words, you just sort of learn these very simple associations of the foreign word with a word that you know. Like in order to really know a word, know it intimately, you need to understand all the different contexts in which it's used. Yeah, so I hope that this has been insightful, I hope that you can get something out of this. I would ideally hope that I can save t people time and trouble and help them to learn languages with less effort, because that's what I found for myself. When I started thinking about context more, I actually started getting more out of less effort. Yeah, thank you!